he's got his, uh, he does, he's got his kilt back. So the kilt's back. You say you saw the kilt. Yeah, I just saw the kilt. I don't know. If you're wearing a kilt, you should have like hilarious looking underwear. underneath. I use boxer briefs specifically for the control aspect of it. You know what I mean? Like I want to control that environment. And I think that I think that if a motherfucker wears a kilt, that is a move toward chaos, right? I'm chaotic evil. I feel like if you wear boxer briefs under it, you're directly sort of going against the... the, the you're, you're in contradiction, man. Yeah, the logic but of it. yourself. Your undercarriage is a... I don't know what's going on. An oxymoron. Yeah, let's Your see undercarriage, it. the paradoxical drawls. Dump them. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there we go. I'm yeah, not I'm dumping them for you guys. Fan underneath a platform back there that you can walk over for some fucking Marilyn Monroe types. Oh, yeah. Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm doing one of these, the boop, 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 you know, that's yeah, it. Exactly. That's right, exactly. man. Strike that pose, make that money, and then finance that next Crypticus record. That's well, what that, we need. That, this footage is out there now. Like, there's no stopping it. You know? It so, is, uh, man. Listen, if you're an interested party, um, you talk to me, and I'll help make the business arrangements. Um, I'm handling Patrick's... Uh, undercarriage. Uh, uh, Under the chassis. And the cupper. <laughs> Twig and berries. <laughs> I, need to, always, I need to get my balls taken up a little bit, I think. Always. Oh, are you getting to that age? They start dropping. How many feet? How, how close are you to your <laughs> kneecaps now? I don't, it's it's less feet to the ground. Let's get my balls removed. Like, fuck this shit. Oh, that's a, what? Get those nudicles put in. You know? No, I don't even need those. You I don't want wanna, those? I'll, I'll freak people out. I don't oh, man. Care. I love the balls. I love having balls. You know, it, it'd be Oh, dude, I'm over it. Really? I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like wearing your Achilles heel. That's true. Not on your heel, but right between your fucking legs. And like when yeah. the wind blows, it your hurts. Achilles, your Achilles nuts. Scro, talk to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's the band I'm thinking of, oh, yeah. There's there's only one Scro, talk to me, baby. Uh, and this there's, there's a full length, but there's also an EP. Um, and I think that if anybody would know sort of about this procedure, they would be an authority. Uh, let's call them up and uh, let's just talk uh, to me. I think they're I, I think they're from Mexico. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> talk to me. Scro, talk to me. Well, we're looking at a couple of installment plans here, but uh, it depends on how you want to do it, Trevor. You know, you will we... wake up in a bathtub in Tijuana. There's another option where we do the, the, the rubber band installments. We give you the tighter and tighter rubber bands that you install yourself over over weeks and months. And we'll uh, we'll give you this color grade here. When your nuts match this color, it's time to, to just pull them off. They're, they're, they're ripe and you can yank them off like a plum. And, That's uh, brutal, man. Hey, he wants it. Dude, like I, I'm terrified of knowing, like seeing what's inside of my balls. Physically oh. seeing your own balls. Oh well, of course. <laughs> outside so, of the back. So so over no, no. Uh, over the summer, back in the or actually back in the early fall, um, I got a vasectomy. And you did? I hell yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah buddy. Fuck, Fuck yeah. yeah. Dude, it's, it's they should awesome. be mandatory. You should have to reverse them to have a kid. I agree. This is to <laughs> Schuler's dead balls. Salud. Salud. All right. So what comes out of there now? Like veganase? Like what is it? It's uh, <laughs> it's it's the same consistency. Um, there's been no, there's been no change. I got Pat. I got you. <laughs> How's the viscosity? What is the visco it? The viscosity is great, baby. Everything is running like it used to. No complaints. So straight up, like you're account. still shooting loads all over the place. They Dude, just... it's still, man, arcing ropes, fucking all over the apartment. All right, Peter North. All over the apartment. You're like fucking Spider-Man. Just... Now that I know that I can't get the walls or the floor pregnant or whatever, I'm fucking everywhere with this. They call Schiller the decorator. I shot it in my own mouth once on accident. <laughs> oh, my God. On accident. I got to see what was inside my balls. It was really cool. They have like a no blade technique now where they like punch in. Oh, they just the little like a, wires. They and punch shit, in right? and then they hook. They hook the vast deferens and they pull that motherfucker out. And I got that part. My wife got that part on video. And it just Trevor, it looks like they do to hogs. I'm not kidding. Patrick, you're frozen. I'm <laughs> positive. You're really committed to that face. Nope. The sickest face of all time. Yeah, uh, I need to take you, a picture of this. You can still hear me though? This is how you this is how you look right now. 
Well, that's not any more or less terrifying than usual. Listening, so. listening to me talk about my my best deference noodle. I was making a face during that that talk too. So. Oh, there there you, you go. You're back. You're back. You're back. I don't know. I like I like the other bat. Yeah, the the fucking. <laughs> It's it's a fun time. It's, it's so fun, isn't time it? To be alive. Yeah, yeah. That's why I need to talk to you guys. So, I, so talk me off the ledge, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were in the basement. Yeah, I can't go any lower. You're right. <laughs> the only thing beneath me is hell. I'm going drilling to hell, baby. Let's uh, let's let's make lemons, boys. Um, yeah, I'm this talking is the best you. I got. What is that for? Do you put that? It's in for your, my goddamn your, Mexican beer, beer that I'm trying to sate myself with over here. Let's, let's make go. lemons. I'm like, gonna put something in my will that says, like, if I die in some sort of fucked up accident and there's video footage of it, I want that video footage to circulate. Like, I want bands to be able to use. The <laughs> I sample. want fluids to get the first yes, fucking. I want I want fluids to be able to see my wow. death and capitalize <laughs> How on it. How crazy would like that be if fluids actually moved into like? We've been going as a band so long that now we actually have our fans. We're putting their death videos and, <laughs> yeah. and sounds in our shit. This is uh, Frank from Poughkeepsie. He he died from a you know a brain aneurysm, and uh, here he is. And here's our new song. Man, there is. We're gonna get to making lemons here in a in a minute. Lemonade, lemonade. <laughs> I, I saw that you guys were all about the uh, the immolation long box picture that was posted earlier. Dude, yeah, man, hell yeah. That's the fucking, um, I thought that was a pretty dope idea. I had to, of course, grab it, and then it came, and, like, I, I missed the long box era, so, like, I never actually got to see well, any really? of that shit. In it. No, no, not that I huh. recall, and it's, and it's I, native. I got a, f a few of them, and I remember yeah. the, very, the very first one I bought was Nevermind, For My Dad. Huh, And what? I was, like, nine, and I was like, all right, I just bought this long box with a dick on it for my dad, and <laughs> let's, let's ride, let's see what happens. Was that a random purchase, or he, you knew that he no, would like it? No, he liked it. He liked oh, wow. um, okay. one of the songs. Oh, yeah, interesting. We used to listen to them together. And uh, Stone Temple Pilots. Wow. And uh, a few others. Well, your dad was pretty hip yeah, for his age, you know? He was, he was. He, uh, he wanted me to... Uh, Make him a tool uh, tape. Wow! I was afraid he would pick up like eventually on the lyrics and kind of like all the fist fucking. Yeah, the fist fucking and the temperature of your asshole and all that stuff. <laughs> Lots of assholes and tool for some reason. I don't know why that's their main theme, but there you go. I I would uh, I'm I'm still interested to see the eight hundred and ten dollar version of the the latest Tool album. Are you, do y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, they dropped the price on it. It costs that much. I haven't seen what's in yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, they dropped it. it to like seven hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. A steep, steep decline, a steep reduction in price because they respect their fans. No, I, 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 I was a huge Tool fan when I was younger. I have not listened to Tool in many years. I'm not sitting here saying that like I fucking don't like Tool or I'm not talking shit about Tool fans. It's just not something that really interests me the way it used to. However, I would like to see what a. I think there's five records in there. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. For, for one album, and I am, I am curious about sort of oh, what that, what like that it's looks uh, like, like that super vinyl fidelity where it's like you know. Two songs I per suppose, side or something. I, yeah, and they uh, well, there's there's no B sides. The B sides are etchings on Get all of five of the discs. <laughs> well, that's fancy so, like, as shit. So it, at least they're making it worth like the eight money. Minutes you know? of listening time before you got to get up and not even yeah. flip a fucking record. You got to get up, pull that motherfucker does, off. Put does it, it away. come come with an exclusive NFT? I was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> it is an NFT. Does it it's come only... with a, a one of a kind flashlight? Uh, of Maynard's asshole? Thing? <laughs> a one to one copy of Maynard's <laughs> butthole? Maynard's dick. What, that was a song. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was like on the, the Tool Saliva box set. I remember buying that when I was in high school and there was like a hidden track where he's like singing about his dick. I'm dead serious. The name of the song is Maynard's Dick. I just imagined him naked and I, I don't know if now. What uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I feel we've all seen him naked, you know, for some reason. Uh, Probably. It, You've it, seen him emotionally <laughs> naked, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a front man, Trevor, you know, you really should should take more out of his book, you know, and really just... Uh, I feel like... Yeah, well, make wine. But show your asshole more on stage is what I was going to say. Uh, bring that back. Huh? Try to blow if yourself you, more on stage. My asshole's not what it used to be, though, let me tell you. I disagree, sir, from here. I think it's glorious. <laughs> I, I think it's glorious. I think it's better than it's ever been. But that's me talking as a fan. I, I do have a bidet again, so that's nice. That okay, you guys scary. are telling me, you're both laughing at me. You guys, are, you guys are smearing shit on your assholes every day. Now, if I go somewhere and I have to shit and the bidet isn't there, I'm like... Back to the 1800s, smearing poop all over my asshole. <laughs> it 
kind of i don't the idea of it freaks me out man i don't know i've never had one before but like a jet of water shooting at me from below is is kind of never creepy. used a, a water pick for your teeth <laughs> I mean, yeah, but that's my teeth. Yeah, and then at the end, you, you're like, wow, this feels so clean. My teeth have never felt so clean in my entire life. Am I right? Schiller, you've never used a water pick on your asshole? What yeah. are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> you never sat on a sprinkler? You guys mean to tell me that when you were a kid, you didn't go into your grandfather's bathroom and take his water pick and stick it in your butt? How do you normally come? You didn't you mean to tell me you didn't put your dick up to the jet in your grandpa's hot tub? <laughs> Now, it's that thing where it's the separate bidet that it's like almost like two toilets. Ah, uh, yeah, that's too much work. I can't yeah. do that. Do you have to fucking, do you have to dismount? I guess. In dismount with a shitty ass, move it over to the next toilet. Which is like three feet away. That's crazy, yeah. man. It's like an assembly line of wiping your ass, and that's kind of crazy. <laughs> I mean, my shit has no, like, structure whatsoever. Like, it's Each time, completely it's, formless. It's a fractal. So, like, it's dangerous to make that jump even three feet. Each time you, know. you shit, it's completely different, right? It's like a- Oh, a, it's it's formless. There's it's, no it's, no structure or color to it. Each no, time it's completely no. different thing. It has, it has no structural integrity whatsoever. But sometimes it's like steel though. Um, you know, I could use more of those, I, you know? <laughs> people are like, when I eat cheese, I get bound up. I'm like, I should eat more cheese. Wow, you, uh, let me tell you, moving to Atlanta isn't gonna help that at all. All that gravy. Oh, dude, I, I'm moving. I'm always moving units, man. I don't <laughs> I, I crap my pants in Japan when I was record shopping. Was this, okay, did you have to play a show with shitty pants? No, no, I was actually, I went on body? one, I've only gone on one vacation ever during the entire course of the band. Really? Because I'm always traveling and I fucking yeah, hate it. I see that. You're getting vacations for free, basically. Well, you know, if you wanna, if you wanna go on a vacation to the Harpos of every town in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that's open? <laughs> yeah. If you want to go to the spray painted piss alley in Italy, like I've been there. I I couldn't tour with a band. It, it just, it's it seems like a, I'm very much a creature of habit is my thing. And yeah. not knowing where you're going to take, the, the biggest thing for me, the saddest thing is like not knowing where I'm going to take my next dump and that like completely fucking mm. up everything else about my life. Oh, there, there's people that I'm a simple motherfucker. can't tour because they can't poop at home. You know, it's crazy. I mean, uh oh, uh oh, we got one. There you there go. We got one. <laughs> Patrick, so when I, I, I So you're I, tethered. You're fucking tethered, man. It's it's frankly it's shortcut my musical life. The fact that I despise traveling. And taking will be what happened there. This fucking zoom gives me a pop up in the middle of this recording. You have a gift from us. Like go fuck your mother. I'm trying <laughs> to talk to my friends. All right, go ahead. Um touring with the band like when we go to, to Indonesia, for example, we will take they will put us on the cheapest six flights that there are. And it'll just six be like, flights. let's take the cheapest route with the most fucking layovers, the most like- It's gotta, it's gotta, it's gotta suck. It, it really man. wears on you, it yeah. really does. It's I can so imagine. Costing. Like I love, like I'm for like, like touring in the States is so much easier because you know, we're in our vehicle. You, we yeah. have some semblance of repetition, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But like in South America, especially it's like, all right, the show runs two hours late. We get up on stage at 1.30, <laughs> and then we're supposed to be in the lobby to go to the airport at at 4.30 a.m. That's crazy, man. So mm. you're fl flying every yeah. day and just like it's chasing down all your equipment and trying to trigger like a four colored drums, drum set with like no name brand shit, with no bottom heads <laughs> before it's doors. Roll, baby. Dude, honestly, like the, every day is like a panic to get set up before doors. We're like, all right, this is what we're working with. That was the deal with the rock and roll tours is that you could be fast and loose with that shit. Cause yeah. if you sound like the Rolling Stones, yeah, you can fuck up all you want. If you sound like the Black Dahlia murder, that shit is precise. Yeah, you You're playing it. precise microscopically. Those motherfuckers are focused on those riffs. Trevor has to be on his shit with that crazy ass poetry he's got to remember. Just the drum kit itself. That's the first thing I think of. You know what I mean? That's it's what you worry a, about. a vast difference than throwing up a cocktail kit. You know oh yeah. I mean? like, yeah, so we're talking about just the triggering situation, miking, like the Neil Pe Peart amount of drums. Right, <laughs> and, and then like while we're you know if we're flying every day, like we we can't take anything but like a snare and like the foot pedals. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like 
here's a mystery kit every day. That's um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and for drummers, that's so you know. Oh, for like, sure. I've I've for had sure. to play on a, a stranger's guitar a couple of times. That is like the worst, most disgusting, yucky feeling. Like what? Uh, this dude, is. I, oh. I, I hate playing abroad when like I don't feel like we sound like ourselves. Like yeah. We don't have, you know what I mean? Like, I, I guess yeah. I'm just being anal and, you know, they're still very happy to see us. You know what I mean? But like, I'm up on stage listening to it like, ah, if I would love to be in a shitty rock and roll band where I could just, you know, fuck off and get drunk and, you know, like be in Guitar Wolf or something. G.G. Allen and the fucking murder Well, movie. I'd rather not be in G.G. Allen. Thank you. I'd rather not get shit flecked every night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit flecked. Shit it's flecked. A it's a, a, a spectrum of extremes. You've, you've got yeah, you've got a very, very very technical show on one end and a dude rolling around in his own feces on the other. Hey, and that's technical in its own way, baby. We'll, it is we'll, indeed. We'll get death metal there soon. You think so? <laughs> Are you going to be the man to do it, Trevor? I don't Bring know, feces man. to to Metal Blade. Bring real like, feces to Metal out, Blade. Guys. I'll walk into the office with a with a handful. A handful. <laughs> we'll pop it on his desk and say, "This is the new album." The new that's album. a very that's like a Glenn Benton move. <laughs> Very bust up, <laughs> bust up into Monty Connor's office and shit on his desk. I am delivering the new album. I am. <laughs> Sign us, you fucking dick. Well, you guys just uh, just told me how I'm going to submit my stuff to Middle Boy. <laughs> there you go. It's maybe there will be maybe there will be some doo doo of flying at NDF this year. I I am like it's gonna I, be a one a one of one mono <laughs> box set. A doo doo NFT. The doo doo NFT. I mean, oh that's, yeah, everyone I send out's different. That's, that's what sure. they say. That's what I've heard on the street, dude. Everyone at Trevor shits is an NFT. The description of, of formless, I think, is particularly like Lovecraftian. Shapeless, formless. <laughs> A dookie that drove that drove me to the edge of insanity when I tried to be, behold it. Don't the look at him. The doo doo so, that should not be. What yeah, would it take, look down. Patrick, to get you? The future is ahead. We're just getting started. Do new NFTs coming soon. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Schiller. What would it take to get you uh, to, to to get you on the on the road? Or is he? Oh, wait, on the road or just to go on a trip with you guys to another uh, third world country? See a trip on. Well, it's not the third world. It's you haven't lived there, sir. It's the third world. It's just when you have to shit in one of those holes, it changes your life. So it really it comes down to the shitting. It comes down to the shitting. It's it's not being on the plane for that long. Or oh, there's that. Oh that. yeah, the reward for that is shitting in a hole. Maybe you'd be better if you jerked off on the plane. You ever jerk off on the plane? Uh, no. Uh, well, no. You're doing it wrong. I was, I'm, I'm thinking. Let me think. I may have. No, 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 I haven't. When I have, is the? When's the last time you were on a plane? I thought you were gonna ask me last time I jerked off. <laughs> no, man, we're good. Currently, <laughs> that would be. I do it. I do it backhand, guys. <laughs> is that? Does that? Uh, does that? Just changing your action. Uh, somehow add novelty to the process. Is What's it like your a mic stranger? technique with your own dick? <laughs> I'm definitely cupping. No cupping. <laughs> no cupping the penis. Dude, you shouldn't cup the vents on your own dick. <laughs> Boy, this episode's gonna be a mess. <laughs> I love it. Well, I have had worms. I have had worms. I have shit. Uh, what does that mean? When you go to shit in the hole in the ground, Schiller, Worms come out of your asshole, and you feel that something curling around, and like, what is ah! this is fucking brutal, man. Is this real? Are you fucking with me, or did you? A hundred percent real. My dad had to oh buy me pills. God. Could uh, you like, fl could you floss with a worm? Like, well, I had to <laughs> pull it out of myself. Oh man, I had to. I, I was, sorry, by the way, I, I was ten years old. I was ten years old. This, uh, was it absolutely fucking horrifying? I, I as a thirty-eight-year-old yeah. man yeah. right now, would probably just die if I if I felt some sort of movement. Well, oh my god, just thinking about it. Wet them. Did you ever find out where the worms came from? Because I walked around in flip-flops in Brazil, you which was in flip-flops and got worms. What a world. Yeah, a third world. This is what I'm telling you. <laughs> I, I just, I need a fucking toilet. I need, maybe I need a bidet. See, I think I got a, I got a, I, 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 I. You want, sound like a good candidate. I think so. <laughs> Those worms want to get wet on the way. Oh out. my God. Uh, Trevor on the side is a bidet salesman, and you didn't know this about him. You see, I work for Tushy. <laughs> Holy shit. If you were to get a bidet endorsement, that would be, that would, that's, that's life changing. Yeah, yeah. Shit I, right I hook there. it up to the toilet in every venue I'm at and just leave it. <laughs> yeah. Like a hip hop artist that leaves the PlayStation behind. They need to, and, and to hire Gudalax. A lot of doo doo. Yeah, there's a lot of doo doo bands that could be <laughs> good tushy sales. There are a lot of. It's interesting. Like product <laughs> placement in death metal, I think, is is an interesting thing to try and think of. Like what outside of 
of just like instrument companies would endorse a death metal band. Like I, I got bitch and sauce to send me some free shit. I'm not oh, even really? fucking in it. Vasectomies? <laughs> death metal vasectomies? You I know think. you want to stop these freaks from reproducing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's got to be some kind of deal where you get some kind of a, a monogram, you know, stitching or something on your sack, you know, that has the Cannibal Corpse logo. It's got to be something like that, too. The him logo. Yeah. Brutal. <laughs> I own their entire discography. Well, you that's you. If you buy one of anyone's record, you have to buy the rest of the discography. I can't help it. Yeah, I know, man. I've got to. I have like... It's, I your, got, it's your vice. Is that I got your one. Short? Oh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm the completest. This motherfucker finishes stuff. I do, and, and I he don't, does all the time. He's I don't even stuff. mean to. That's, that's <laughs> I am a finisher. I never finish anything, man. I'm like, I can't shit. help myself, man. I have to have all of it. Yeah, like the the BDM records I turned in aren't even done yet. No, like I, <laughs> <laughs> I. So this is, and this has led me to like some questionable places. Like I found myself in a situation a few years ago where like I needed to purchase Massacre's album Promise. Simply because, oh, I, oh, simply God. because I needed to have, <laughs> I needed to, to have everything. Half.com. I found, <laughs> I was surprised at how difficult it was to find one. Got it on Discogs and it came and I listened to it. Of course it's awful, but like it fills a much needed gap in my collection. Well, I you're can't. kind of an archivist, I feel. I am uh, to an extent, yes, you could, you could say that. I am a very well, studying strange death shit. metal archivist. I am, uh, but like studying, I don't, I don't think that I would need to study Promise. Uh, so you, you have that that womb bath lavatory album too. I do not. Doing? I do not own any womb bath. Well, hey, but we 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 must all agree that we dive into albums that we that are that we don't like, like Cold Lake, which sure. is you, which I own you have vinyl. to have a copy of Cold Lake. You know, you just have to. I have Cold Lake on vinyl, motherfucker. I'm serious about wow. this. Wow, Tom G Warrior, come on the show. <laughs> you heard Tom us. G, Tom G Warrior, like. Us. Yeah, no. you you loved the first episode. Yeah, you loved the first episode. And now you're on the hook because we're talking about an album that you don't ever want anybody to talk about. I'm sure you wouldn't. Mind. But like, I I dive into like irredeemable albums to try and find right. something I, about I, I them that I like. I get morbidly curious. I get morbidly curious. Yeah, that's like, what we I'm talked saying. about last time. Like, I willingly bought um, Saint Anger like after hearing the first two songs and knowing <laughs> yeah. it was terrible. Like, I was like. What if there's more laughs to be had? Like, what if, exactly, like the exactly. value here in the record is like these ultimate laughs. But Saint Anger should be taught in like psychology classes, like an abnormal psych or whatever. They gotta be like, listen to this, and we're going to like work backwards, unraveling the shit that led to it. Like, here's where the flower pot fell on James Hetfield's head. His personality <laughs> changed completely. Uh, the, the flower the, pot full of vodka. Yeah, the skipping, oh. <laughs> the skipping his kid's birthday to go bear hunting in Russia. But see, that's a terrible yeah. Metallica album, but it's a great slam album. You see, so. it's a, oh man, that's a bold claim. <laughs> <laughs> the, the production is ready for slam. Definitely. I would have to go back through and listen to it again. Sanguis Sugabog has those drums going for sure right now. They do. They have the ping. They've got the ping, and it's not quite the garbage can thing. Um, I love the sound of Sang Sanguis Sugabog's drums. I think me too, dude. Great. Me too. They're, they're I so, love their production. It's kind of the best part of their uh, sound. I feel their drums are like really buttery and nasty sound. I like. <laughs> I like Sang with Sugabog. One of my favorite things about him is that if you actually sit down and pay attention to it, if you listen to it, there's a lot of kind of atypical weird shit going on in those songs. Oh, definitely. The riffs especially are very, there's like, a lot of innovative, cool shit. Yeah, and it's not, it's, it's not like lowest common denominator caveman shit, which rules too. And there's definitely like a dumb aspect to it, which is also cool, but, which but is at the purpose. same time, like, it's yeah, of course, of course. And if you look at those dudes and, and all the different projects that they're involved in across the board, like there's a number of different, you know, subgenres that they tap into. They've got a fucking, there's like a D-beat band and there's like a brutal death metal band and a bunch of other. A lot of the, the tongue in cheek is still there with the other bands though, too. Yes, cool. yes. Yeah. <laughs> I do like that uh, Sanguis Togabog is a fun band. Dude. I've I seen like them it. twice. Um, it's a fucking totally fun live show. Like you can, and you can tell that they're fucking having a blast. They have a, a personality cool. as a group. Like they're all fucking weirdos, and like they they do well with social media as a band. As a death yeah. metal band, I think you know. Like for me, one of the one of the fucking craziest experiences was was Pig Destroyers, um, Prowler in the Yard. I bought it. Uh, this was like 2002, I think. I was in Conway, Arkansas. I bought it because of the cover and relapse records. I had not heard Pig Destroyer before. And I took it out to my car and I popped it in and I pull out the liner notes and I start looking through the liner notes. And like, 
what a harrowing fucking experience i recall <laughs> sitting in the car it was so cold outside i remember listening to that album and like knowing that i was hooked on something and and part of what made that such an enigmatic experience was the fact that i didn't go in there looking for it you know that's fascinating that you just grabbed it kids don't get that anymore you know just uh, i i'm gonna buy this because the cover looks gross yeah and i was looking at the covers i was like uh, writing down band names from the thank you list. Yes, yes. Yeah, the thank you lists were always a good I remember spot like to look. always being like, one day I'm going to find that gore lust. <laughs> which I did eventually. I love that album. It only took 20 years. <laughs> yeah. The one with the piano on the cover? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love that album. That's a great I'm album. Not familiar sick, with this. It's really sick. Uh, yeah, Reign no, of Lunacy? I think gore so. Gore lust is the band? Yes, from uh, I think they're Quebecois. I think they're. Yep. It's, a, would, it's bro, got a little bit of Cryptopsy flavor, yeah. of course, because that it's was Canadian. Cool. You got to yeah, do it. Yeah. They're much more old school, though, like a kind of Cannibal Corpse. You'd really love them, Schiller. They have two albums. Yeah, they came back, and the, and the new shit's cool too. But uh, the old one is just like uh, one of those classic, overlooked, you know, just cool records, yeah. man. Like what else is like Necrotic Mutation? I've got the Necrotic Mutation. They nice. they re-released those two. Uh, it was like a, a one set that had two albums right, in there. Right. That shit's cool as fuck. Yeah, dude, yeah, for sure. That one of the dudes from Necrotic from Necrotic Mutation is in um, a Curion. Have either of you guys heard them? Oh yeah, that's Fucking DeSalvo's. Uh, Mike DeSalvo on vocals. That was <laughs> yeah. his his fucking his like his hardcore grunt bark thing, dude. I love Whisper Supremacy is my favorite Cryptopsy album. I fucking love Mike DeSalvo as a vocalist. Came out on Redefining Darkness two years ago. Somewhat almost black metal y sounding death it's, metal. In places, it's got some black metal feel to it. Like, they're definitely pulling from all over the place style wise, but you've got like some fucking Canadian legends in that band. Ollie Pennard, who plays bass in Cattle Decapitation, he's been in a bunch of other bands that's in there. Uh, Mike DeSalvo, obviously, royalty on vocals. Canadian but, metal! Dude, there's a lot of good Canadian shit. Can you shit fucking mad? They're a just got shit to be mad about. Well, dude, I mean, like, like you got Rush. Yeah. You know, then you have like Voivod and Martyr. Yeah. And then Cryptopsy. It's just like a whole tree of like tacked out madness up there. It is. Know? They, Neuraxis is Canadian. I right. always attributed it great. to the cold for some reason, which is completely just my own. You know, I have no idea if that's a fact, but I'm just like, it's so cold that it, the Canadian hyperblast makes them sound like that. But <laughs> I have no, no actual, I have no meteorological uh, knowledge about that, you know. <laughs> it's the poutine. <laughs> it is the. It could be the poutine, man. I've never had authentic poutine before, but me I neither. want to. Dude, it makes me want to play really scronky chords. It's just nice. pure, just a big pile of carbs, right? You're just getting a big plate of carbs. No, you get some oh, fat in there too. You get some fat in there too. <laughs> fat the and carbs, exactly. Fat perfect. and gravy and oh. and I think there's Dude. mayo in there. If I'm not Good lord. <laughs> we, we tried to do a, a tour where we ate poutine every night for a week. How'd that go? Exactly how you think it went. Band full of fat boys. <laughs> Lots of farts. Oh my God, can you imagine? That's, it's it's Canada though. The weather is so brutal up there that when you get one meal, you need that one meal to like fucking <laughs> put some fucking blubber on your body yeah, so right. that you can <laughs> endure <laughs> so that you can survive the fucking, the, the Canadian, the harsh Canadian winter. Canadian nuts. <laughs> A good uh, side of uh, walrus blubber, you know. Jeez, That's how I take my uh, poutine. That sounds wild. Yeah, uh, it, and I sleep for six weeks in in in, in a snowbank. It's a, a staple of the diet. I, I had this idea for a poaching death metal band, like pro poacher. Oh wow, that'd be <laughs> controversial as fuck. I mean, it'd be a joke, obviously. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? But like, that'd be like bringing back the Cannibal Corpse level of controversy for, for sure, the new for age. Sure. You know, it'd be like you'd have like fake ivory tusk tuners on your guitar and like oh animal skins for like every skin on the drums like uh you know you like have some exotic animals in cages on stage with let you. me tell you this band ain't gonna get a, a cameo in ace ventura that's not gonna happen yeah. Yeah. poacher <laughs> who's the poacher guy from the wolverine comics craven the hunter that's how i'm gonna dress like oh, oh wow the dodo could be the mascot yeah the dodo We'll have a dodo like metronome. It'll be a <laughs> Well, this is very high concept. Uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, we'll obviously. get to work on this immediately. Piece of art offends or whatever. Uh -oh. Why does this keep happening? What? Is that your gimp in a bag? 
Yeah, I know. Like, I, I'm pretty sure last time I was trying to make some sort of point, this fucking happened again, too. My fucking Trevor, he has one of those audition gimps in a bag in his room, yeah, if you know what I'm talking about. What's going on, Go over there and kick the bag. That, to me, that fucking scene in audition <laughs> is one of the most disturbing fucking things I've ever seen in my life. Like, that was a perfect fucking scene. I don't even remember it. I've you know seen it, but I don't you know remember what? it. Yeah, there's like, it's it, the girl's on the phone, and like, her face is in the foreground. And then in the background, you see like this burlap sack on the ground, like move. And but it's, it's after been... it's been there for like five minutes with with her just on the phone, and then it just goes. Thump. Oh man, what a fucking disturbing fucking scene. Now correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. Doesn't she go over and then just start kicking the bag? <laughs> I she goes and she goes and she pukes in a bowl. Jesus Christ. She goes and she pukes in a bowl and she and the guy eats it. I think I haven't seen that's, audition. That's who's in, like, in the bag. Yeah, the yeah, guy. Yeah, he's the, the bag. guy. The guy in the bag. I haven't seen wow. that movie in like fucking fifteen years, probably. Like that. Me, that gay is a master. <laughs> uh, his shit is just so like he's done, he's made so many disturbing movies. Very bizarre. Yeah, we don't have an equivalent of him in our film culture. Have you ever seen um, uh, Ichi the Killer? Ichi the Killer. Yes, yeah. I have seen that. Oh boy, that's a t that's a roughie. That's fucking yeah, that's brutal, man. <laughs> Man, when they're burning that guy with the oil, Jesus Christ, the special effects are amazing. It was one of the more disturbing movies that I that I saw around that time when I was like, that was in my fucking super hardcore gross out phase where like I was watching the most disturbing shit I could get my hands on. And, you know, not all of it was uh, actual movies. So was... I, I still haven't seen a Serbian film. I have it sitting on a hard drive for when I feel wily. But almost it's... every person I ask about that's seen it is like, just don't. I'm like, how wily do you feel like you can get? I think you I should watch know. it. I think you should watch it. It goes to such a level of insanity that I almost find it comical after a while. It, it's like, let me guess. Like, yep, they did it. Like, yep. <laughs> so, so I appreciate it on that level. And it, what's weird about it is that I, I guess it's saying something culturally about Serbians that we're not getting. It's supposedly some very metaphorical film. As I understand it, a lot of the commentary that's supposed to be in the film, uh, a, a lot of people thought that it was eclipsed by the spectacle. For sure, it was. For sure, Which, it was. and if you if you see it, you'll know what we mean. It's pretty. It's pretty wild, man. Like I, I, I do know a few things that happened. Yeah. Like honestly, it's not one of those movies that I look back on and say, "I'm so glad that I saw that. It changed me." I person, have enriched whatever. my life. <laughs> <laughs> the worst experience with a movie like that that I've seen, where you're talking about things that aren't obviously fake, was right. irreversible. I assume you guys oh have seen God. Irreversible. Are you familiar yeah, with it? Yeah, the movie's crazy as fuck. Yeah. Um, but like the, the yeah. fire extinguisher scene, where he puts that fucking guy's head in, yeah, amazing effects. Yeah. Have you seen like the making that, of that? No, I haven't. I, I, was, I remember amazing. watching it and being like, this is, especially at the time, being, being like, how is this not real? Like it looks how... like documentary footage. It looks it so it sloppy and the camera's moving around. You can like, that can't be a special effect. Yeah. But when you see how they did it, it's like, it's all CG. It's, it's mind boggling. See, man, that's crazy. Yeah, it's, Especially it's at that time work. too. Like that, you know, it, it's, 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 it's not the dark ages, but at the same time, CG has come a very, very fucking long way. Well, that's, you know, that's the brilliance of Gaspar Noé. He, he is such a director that wants to punch you right in the fucking gut with everything he does. And it, yeah. he really does, he you know, he, <laughs> If you look at that like you look at a Cannibal Corpse album, you're like, man, that motherfucker succeeded. Yep. But, you know, it's a lot more brutal to sit and watch that than to listen to Chris Barnes rattle off a bunch of shit about Gilles de Ray. You know, yeah. we were just talking about Canadian and French Canadian metal and how that culture sure. is with their with their sound. We're discussing the French extreme. This was the, yeah, the French extreme. Right. Yeah. Which uh, that was a huge part of their culture. That film. Um, uh, martyrs, smart, especially inside. martyrs. High, inside, all those films, tension. I feel had so much to say about their culture and what they were. I feel each of those films is really trying to express something way beyond the violence, and I feel the violence yeah. is so. Those films are amazing and really the uh, to me allegorical for like Cannibal Corpse albums and stuff like that. It's a yeah. rough, it's a rough watch. Well, and that's the I don't know. It's something about the music. Music would never affect me in that way. Yeah, it's a whole different part of your brain. I can't get that like, like. You want to wash your soul feeling that <laughs> yeah. you get when you first see Martyrs and you're oh, like, God, yeah. <laughs> I feel guilty for having watched this. I've seen Martyrs. I've seen Inside. Uh, what were the other ones? Um, in Frontier. Matriarch, our song is based on Inside. Yeah. I, Somewhat. I figured. Uh, and the, like an actual occurrence of that, too. Really? <laughs> yeah. Some historical thing? Insane. Yes. And it turned out to be a fucking killer song. Um, 
Got to make uh, lemons out of it. Schiller, there you, see? exactly. See, I'm that's the optimism. Back. That's what I do. I, I, I do show prep. Horrible, I do show prep. When I read about a horrible experience in which an unborn child is cut from a mother, I think to myself, "What a wonderful world!" <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> Is High Tension one of those? Or? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That was yeah, one of the first that. ones, I think. That one's amazing. But Very cool, very cool. Yeah, that one scared the Brutal fuck movie. out of me. When he scoots that, he's got that guy's head through the staircase, and he yeah. scoots that bureau and just smushes that guy's head off. I, I, fucking... That was one of the first things since I was a kid where I was like, I almost turned the TV off. That fucked me yeah, up so it's, much. It's, it's brutal, like, and it wow. does... It would be interesting to sort of, you know, and this is probably something that's definitely been done. I would love to read about it, but I, I, I wonder how much the people who create, you know, who write and who filmed and who did all of the, brought all of the visual aspects of that to the fore, foreground. I, I'm curious about sort of the, the creation prospect, the, the creation aspect of it. Yeah, like they, they watch it back together at the end. They're like, yeah, Looks I feel good. like absolute trash now. Like <laughs> it, it worked. It, it's all it all worked. So Monica yeah. Bellucci, what do you think of that scene you just yeah, like, What do you? Uh, so how do you? You know, does it? Does this look like a, a flayed body? Like, do you think? Do you guys think that we uh, that we nailed it? Like <sighs> martyrs. Oof. Yeah, but Dude, martyrs. I, martyrs is rough. You know they? Did you know that they made a, an English version of yes, martyrs? Yes, yeah, it's like sucky, like, right? Heard it. I mean, like I didn't. I hadn't terrible. seen it. Um, but it's I heard about, it was. I heard it was not great, and I heard that they. I heard that they changed the ending. And it's supposedly about half the budget of the original and it was done just kind of in a week or something. Yeah, it, like one of those, kind of like the remake of Cabin Fever where you watch is like, this is worse than the original. Why what did are you they doing? do that? I heard that that was for copyright reasons to retain a copyright. I don't know if that's true, but I heard that. It is interesting to me how, how sort of like a, a shitty fucking movie will get made specifically so somebody can like retain the rights to a character or something. Yeah, that kind of garbage. That fucking, <laughs> those last couple of Hellraiser movies, man. Right, exactly, yeah. Um, Which, I'm soaked as fuck on the- uh, The new one? The, yeah. I'm very intrigued. Did you guys see the um, the Night House with Rebecca Hall? Uh, Pretty recent horror movie. I don't know if it'd no. be up your guy's alley. It's, it's I read the plot on Wikipedia. I it's a to. it's a very good movie. It's a very good movie. But it's a, yeah. you know, I it might bore the shit out of you if it's not the kind of thing you're looking for. It's not really like, you know It seems like a novel concept, like a No, it's just a ghost movie. But anyway, the guy who directed it, it was very well directed and really kinda of, yeah. I felt it was very well done. And that's who's doing the new Hellraiser. I can't think of his name. But um I, when I watched that movie I went, Oh, okay, this dude, yeah, I like I could see him doing some really amazing Cinnabites and shit. There was some kind of Hellraisery elements, no spoilers that kind of snuck yeah. into the night house just a little bit. But, and so I thought, hmm, okay, I could see that. Um, I'm all up on the new horror shit. So I don't know, you guys are probably too busy for that, but I, I'm constantly, uh, no. as much as I'm into music on the reg, I'm into horror and everything on the reg. I'm always oh, that's watching. That's cool. I, I kind of felt like there wasn't enough good shit out there to get excited about, but like- Well, there might not, that's why I dig. So yeah, if I find anything cool, I'll definitely recommend to you so that, cause uh, I see a lot of shit that just bores the shit out of me. But I don't know, Trevor, do you do you like really atmospheric shit or does it have to be more kind of action-y for you in the no, whole I could, I could go either way, you know, like I, like- uh, Well, you said you liked Hereditary, right? I did, I loved it, honestly. Fuck, yeah. yeah. That's my that's another Hereditary. movie that, that like made me feel like that same martyrs feeling. Like afterwards I was like, <laughs> I'm it was like when I first heard death metal, when I first like yeah. perused the lyrics to Butcher at Birth and like was like, you know, just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I just, I love how tense it was, dude. Like, yes. Like the, the family, the familial, like, just like meltdown was just like oh, so painful to watch. I it was like it. a slow motion car wreck and just, ah! Like, how do people not like that movie? Some people don't. Like, <laughs> That's I don't, how I, I feel. Don't, I, don't I, don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. Part of what I loved about it was just how fucking weird it was, but it didn't feel like that until way later. You know what I mean? Like it sne sneaks up there, on you. Yeah, there are mm -hmm. all of these bizarre like things about this family and their house and their habits and the <sighs> way that they talk to each other and like all of that shit sort of comes to a head later in the movie and it the just miniatures. catches you by surprise. Yeah, that you realize how like how bizarre it is. And I, I think that that worked with me a lot better than like Midsummer. I I did not care for Midsummer. Yeah, Midsummer I was a kind of long winded. It had its yeah, moments, I guess. For sure. I liked but it, like it, but yeah, I can... Hereditary, like, I thought it was, yeah. like, I had my high, my hopes way too high. Me too. Yeah. I think Hereditary is, like, all of the shit that appears normal until you find yourself at a, at a juncture in the movie where you're like, none of this is fucking normal. This is really fucked up. And then, like, with, with Midsummer, it's like he took an entirely different thing, and he was like, I'm just going to throw fucking weird shit at people from me, the get-go. 
<laughs> to me, midsummer is some kind of weird statement about the weirdness of white people. That's kind of how I took it. <laughs> I mean, I can white the, people. The weirdness of a that. Scandinavian super white cultures and just like how, how bizarre they are. That's kind of how I felt. But I mean, that's clearly not how we I, I feel like it there is, is a, a shock, like seeing violence in the like absolute bright of day and stuff like yeah. that. It's yeah. Really... It was very and striking I, I, visually. I think that if, and I think that if the, the weird shit about it was sort of relegated to that, that would be more interesting. But like, there are a lot of, there are a lot of places in that movie where it specifically feels like th they were, you know, filming on the day or whatever. And we're like, what's something weird that we can do? <laughs> like, let's do, let's do something weird and hopefully confuse people into thinking that it's something scary. It's like thinking specifically about when, uh, when old boy, uh, ends up fucking that girl and like half the fuck all the women of the village are inside They're the pushing fucking, his butt inside the thing watching and this woman comes up push his butt <laughs> and like I'm sitting there thinking to myself what does this accomplish? Well like, I think it, you're missing a huge layer of comedy in there. It's very dry horror based yeah, comedy. Like maybe I don't know and I've only seen it once maybe if I watch it again it would click a little bit For better, sure watch but, it again. Did you catch all the weird subliminal images where you did those pop out to you on first viewing? Because it's I don't full know. of subliminal. Honestly man I can't remember like I we watched it in theaters um with you know my wife went with me and a couple of my friends went and I remember just being like, this is kind of, this is weird for the sake Okay, of watch it again thing. after you've consumed some things, okay? <laughs> I don't and know if I want to take that trip or not, man. Take the trip, bro, take the trip. So <laughs> this morning, they uh, are testing the fucking fire extinguisher in the, or the fire alarm in the building today. And there are speakers in every room of every unit. I'm just sitting here and like, there's this weird hum that comes in through the speakers. And then like this music, it sounds like Girl from Ipanema. And I was sitting there thinking, like, is this really happening? It's like, like you're in the prisoner. You're in the village. There's this fucking it was a crazy experience, man. Like it was it was very You're in an Ari Aster movie right now. It yeah. Was, so um, like I don't like, know if Ari Aster is exactly where I want to go in that particular <laughs> frame of mind. I don't know if I am okay with the world and myself quite enough. I like to be tortured by a horror movie. I love to be tortured by a horror movie. That's why that French shit really rang my bell. I'm at the point in my life now where like I don't necessarily want to say that I've toned down because there are some things that are just like less attractive to me than other things. Like I don't really I'm I'm not really into like gratuitous gore like I was when I was a kid, but I want like slow burn psychological horror that's really gonna fuck with me. And the thing is, those are kind of the yeah, same. Yeah, that's kind of what I want too, man. That's that's kind of, like, like those are hereditary. That's the strong suit. Hereditary, man. I and the witch. I thought the witch was great. Like the witch did amazing it wasn't, movie. It wasn't I never, terrifying. I never saw the witch. Bro, what? you would love it. You'd it love is, it. It is super, it's very cool. They're speaking in such archaic English that it's like well, nothing they say is normal. And it's amazing. Like, have a go at my tuppence. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, oh, so you've, you've, you've so you've seen, seen it. Seen it. <laughs> You'll love Black Phillip. Black Phillip. You can yeah. write a killer song tuppence. about Black Phillip. There's only so much, well, I guess we can't really talk about it anymore. I mean, obviously you've seen the tuppence scene. Like it kind of. I think set off that new folk horror trend. Yeah, I think was, absolutely. That was the movie that did it, you know? Yeah. Have sure. you guys seen The Ritual? Yeah. I thought that no. was a masterpiece. Ooh, I thought uh -uh. the fucking creature design in The Ritual was off the fucking Spoiler chain. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Oh, Spoiler. Shit. What are you talking about? There's no creatures in The Ritual. <laughs> Fuck. Well, I don't want to watch a movie without creatures. So. Trevor, watch yeah. The Ritual immediately. <laughs> the ritual. I, mean, I had read the book. I'm a big fan of that that author. Oh, fuck. He, I didn't even know it was a book. Yeah, he... Uh, well, this is what's interesting. The book is full of black metal and death metal references, and all the characters are listening to black metal and death metal, and the, vi the, the villains in the cabin, they're all wearing black metal shirts and shit. This is in the book, and in the movie, they just kind of strip that out. And I can't kind of see why. It would take too much explaining. But it, will, uh, it would definitely be distracting, yeah. Cause a lot of literally people like, half the fuck? book is like, they'll stop, you know, like in American Psycho, where he talks about Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah. Well, Adam Neville in The Ritual would write chapters about Marduk and shit. It takes place in the woods of Scandinavia, like the far yeah, remote woods yeah. of Scandinavia. And I uh, highly recommend the movie, though. Even though the black metal stuff was taken out, it's a terrifying movie. Terrifying. That's on, it's on Netflix too, yes. right? I think it was a Netflix movie, if I'm not. Yeah, it's a Netflix movie, and it's free. I think it's Netflix here. I think it was in theaters. In Captured all the horror of the book. Uh, all the the scenes of horror in the woods are so evocative and terrifying. And then where it goes is really scary and unique. Highly recommend that one. Uh, the woods. The woods are bad news. <laughs> yeah. Sure. How did the woods get so scary? 
I, you know what I mean? I mean I'm going to say it's the rednecks' faults. Is, it may be, but the like, there's, fucking, that, there's nature out there. You know what I mean? And that's just well, that gross. Too. Well, then you're getting into Sasquatch territory. Are you squatching, bro? Are you squatching, bro? Dirt, and there's fucking bugs out there. Man. You're going to ignore the threat of the Squatch? I am. Did you see, uh, what is it, Exists? Yes, I did. Yes, which I liked it until they showed the monster. Then I was like, that's just a homeless guy. <laughs> Interesting movie. <laughs> That's just a homeless guy. <laughs> yeah. <It's>, yeah. <laughs> it really is just a homeless guy in a, in a gorilla suit running after him. Uh, that was the Blair Witch people, right? I think that was their... Uh, their... They were involved in some way. I don't know if they directed it. Oh, or man. I'm, I definitely went to see Blair Witch when it was still in, like, the small theaters. Me too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. There was still yeah. that, like, air of, like, did this really happen? I was <laughs> terrified. I love that movie, Terrified during the you last 10 minutes of that the movie. the shit out of me. Oh, me too. Me too. I, I almost scared covered my eyes. Me. I was so scared in the theater. And then afterwards, I like, nothing happened, and it scared nothing the happened. fuck out of me. <laughs> he stood in the corner. Ah! <laughs> well, that's the thing, man. Like, I, there's no fucking creature design. There's no CGI. There's nothing that can scare me as much as, like, you showing me an empty space under spooky circumstances and letting me fill it with my imagination. Like, there's no... That's going to scare me the most. Always, every the time. The booger scared me. The booger? The one, the, the, the nose drop? Yes. Oh, the... the uh, <laughs> are we I'm scared and hunted? Well, that's what made it real sorry, to me. The was like mom? The boogers yeah. made it real. Yeah, the boogers made it real. After that movie was over, I had friends telling me, remember that part where you saw the witch's gnarled hand? And it was like, that never happened. And then I had someone else tell me, yeah, you know that at the end, when they turn in the corner, the guy's floating in the corner? I'm like... That, that's you not see he's what just you want to see. They added yeah. their own shit to it. It was really fascinating. People told me they heard shit in that movie that wasn't in it. And his pants were down. <laughs> his pud was in his hand. He had his shit tucked back. You could see the fruit salad from the Did back. Did you see the bidet? <laughs> you could see that he doesn't use a bidet. He doesn't use the bidet. Like you two shit asses. <laughs> How dare you, yeah, sir? Shit asses. You that's two. what we are, man. Yeah, yeah. Fucking you just... Yeah, like knuckle dragon, fucking knuckle dragon, smearing, smearing poop all over your butts all day. Talking to a refined gentleman, I know. That's like, right. Now I'm gonna eat, be... eat off my asshole right now. <laughs> I will, god damn it! I <laughs> will. <laughs> but I bedayed. Hey, I'm a, I'm a wipe guy. I got wipes. Uh, I'm clogging up the system. Oh yeah, this, the old uh, fighting with the septic tank. <laughs> all right, so so back to the bidet thing. Are you so? <laughs> That's the theme of this episode. Are you, are you, do you have to wipe at all? Or do you just dry your ass? You do, you a do towel? a wipe to check if anything missed and also simultaneously get the water drops off. To dry, you, yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, I get up in there with the soap. Shit I'm, smears. I'm a, Trevor's right. over here on the three seashells making us look like fucking <laughs> animals. He's like, I'm in the yes. future, motherfuckers. You motherfuckers are back there touching your buttholes with paper. Oh, How many people I'm are going to get that reference, do you think? I'm at Taco Bell right now in the future. Somebody's got to get that. I saw a fucking diagram somewhere on the internet that somebody made of how the three seashells are used. And, like, it horrified me because one of the... Trevor, you wouldn't be able to do it because you have formless dumps. The, uh, one of the <laughs> oh, seashells, it's only for people that have one logs. Of, huh? One of the seashells, like, you open it and you clasp a turd, right? And then you pull it out of your butt. And I, I can't help but think to myself... Oh, no, that, that's so far removed from what I could do. That's not going to happen. And what an unsatisfying experience, man. Like, I don't want to fucking... It comes out on its own. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need to pull. I don't want to Yeah, I've, I've never been dealt with any resistance. Let me tell never. you. Never. No, man. My it, it knows it knows what it's supposed to do. Just let okay, nature. Okay, I got constipated like once when I was on some kind of painkiller from the doctor or something. But like that's about it. Yeah, that shit can clog you up. I had to, yeah. I had to take stool softeners. All right, so remember what I was talking about when I shit my pants in in uh, Japan. Japan, yeah. Yeah, I, I I've noticed a correlation between drinking rice beer and shitting myself. Like this has happened a couple times. What is rice beer? Is it like Sapporo? Oh, There's okay, a lot of Japanese okay, okay. beers that are rice-based instead of wheat-based. So do you, when you eat like regular rice, do you shit your pants? <laughs> no, not that I noticed, but... Don't lie. Not that I noticed. Don't lie. Not that I noticed. You would know. Surely you'd notice. No, he's no fucking... Not that my neighbors have noticed. Now at this point that with the bidet yeah, situation... Yeah, up here like... on this pedestal of <laughs> cleanliness, <laughs> I can smell your assholes from here. <laughs> I don't even believe he has a bidet, Schiller. I think this is all just a fucking op. Engineered. It's an op. He doesn't even have a bidet. He's... I don't even poop. <laughs> yeah. 
the God King. <laughs> That's 4D chess, bro. If I had the option, I wouldn't poop anymore. Right before we got on today, I had to take my dog out, and she is scared to take a shit. She's scared to shit. So you better get that seashell and pinch and it. And exactly. It but out. like, and that, that to me, every now and then I'll stop and think about it. I'll have these horrible, like, existential realizations while I'm taking my dog out, and I'll think to myself, is there a worse hell than being afraid to take a dump? I don't know, Pat. Why don't you tell us? I took a dump before I got online with you guys. What are you talking about? Uh, being afraid to po po poop out in the world and stuff. Oh, yeah, oh well. Taking it back there. <laughs> that would be horrible. It's not It's It's not that I'm afraid. It's that it It degrades me. <laughs> it degrades me as a human being. To shit amongst It would be better time. to shit in an open field. I'm glad we're all feeling awesome better. Awesome shirt, dude. Oh. Discord. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, That's exquisite. Well, thank thank Perfect. you, bastards, for elevating my mood and making my life work well. So cool, thank, yeah. you for thank, one, you. thank you, thank you. We bought you one more week. One yeah. more week. <laughs> one more week of this shit. God damn it. <laughs> we'll see what we'll see what's happening with you next Tuesday. All right. Thank you. Peace thank out. You. Peace out. Peace out. Y'all have a good one. I love you guys. Love Later you. Too. See you later.